If someone is drowning in the water, as much as someone who can't swim may want to jump in the water to save them, it would be very foolish. It's important to bear witness to the suffering of others, to listen so we can help. But tapping into our inner joy and our inner peace means tapping into a source that is not related to anything in this physical world. Now, to be in bliss is not a crime. It doesn't mean we laugh and celebrate in front of people who are suffering. We, of course, project an outward appearance that is appropriate for the environment that we're in. But it does them no good for you to suffer with them. We cannot bring them out of their suffering if we are down in there with... When we are crushed by depression and anxiety and stress, we are no good to anybody. And so the greatest thing we can do in our lives for everyone around us is to connect with that peace, joy, and love within, to make it our home. And so we can invite people in wherever we go. And no matter what they're going, we can give them a smile. We can reignite that spark in their eye. This is why comedians go to perform in war zone because we need someone to lift us up when we're down and when we're up we can be there to lift others it simply involves spending a little time every day either with our eyes closed or with our attention turned inward into our spiritual dimension to the spaciousness and depth within us in this present moment. Pure feeling and being and recognizing that it is always there within us. A deep peace that we can tap into and we can use as a reservoir of strength so we can be stronger for those who need us. I know that as the holidays are coming up, what should be a festive and joyous time for all of us, for too many, is a time that evokes a great deal of grief and loss and memories of past trauma. Many of us are celebrating alone, estranged from family, and we are all of us, to some extent, disconnected from that tribe, that tight-knit community that we evolved to live within. And we're disconnected from nature. And these things that fill up our spirit and enrich our lives in dramatic ways that really all of us are suffering from on some level. We are social creatures. We are loving, family-oriented species. And in these modern times where sometimes we live far away from our families, sometimes families have been the source of trauma, or we've lost dear loved ones, seeing all of that holiday spirit around us, idealized and 
films and television and songs can really put a magnifying glass on our own suffering and exacerbate it, make us feel like we're really missing out. And this time that is already troubling is even made worse when we feel it's a time where we should be happy. And if you have lost someone and the holidays without that person feel like a gaping black hole, if you're estranged from your loved ones, disappointed and maybe even out of a need to protect yourself from cruelty and abuse, I hope we can all remember that you're not alone. None of us are alone. We may be suffering alone, but there are countless people out there who are going through the same struggles. And I hope we can remember that this story in our mind that may be focusing on loss or a traumatic past during these holiday seasons, that they are still stories. They are thoughts and feelings in our mind and body. And we are the witness to that story. We aren't those thoughts and feelings. And I hope we can all witness those thoughts and feelings, the good and the bad, with some sense of peace in knowing that we can watch without getting trapped inside, that we can watch with a bit of distance between that story from our past that is so hurtful and that which sees and experiences those thoughts. And when we can witness that heavy emotion and thought, and we can witness how it wishes for things to be different than they are, that we can even accept a bit of that reality which is. We can understand that no one is promised a tomorrow. No one is promised a loving, supportive family, even though we all deserve it. And that we can eventually learn to witness those good times that we have had in our lives and we can witness those bad times and we can recognize that no matter what has happened we are still here we have this breath and whether we lost a loved one and we know how much they would want us to become happy and live every moment to the fullest, or whether we're dealing with abusive family and we have to realize that for our own sake, we have to make the most of this life, that we can find peace in that witnessing, that we feel as though while this movie of life we're watching maybe in that sad scene we can find a way to believe and know that there will be a happy ending the happy ending is what we make it we are the witness of this movie but we are also the creators of our story and while certain things don't go the way we intended or we wish, we know that we are able to change that internal story. We can find the light in that darkness. We can cherish those good times we had with our loved ones. We can forgive those who hurt us and we can give ourselves permission to find the joy 
in everyday little moments and give us the permission to make new joyful moments. Just like we sometimes watch the news, we feel we must bear witness to the world's suffering. We must bear witness to our own and we must love ourselves enough to feel those feelings, think those thoughts, cry when we need to cry. But we also must give ourselves the freedom to feel joy and love as well. The more we accept the pain, the more we allow ourselves to feel and grieve, the less suffering that that pain can cause. Pain will be there, but whether we suffer from that pain is whether we choose to resist it or allow it to be. Because when we allow something to be without any hatred or anger or pessimism, then we can peacefully experience even very heavy grief and loss.